Hi everybody, it's Dandruff with your news cartridge for Monday, November 28th, 2016. Today begins with a leak of the opening cinematic of The Last Guardian. If you want to view the whole thing with Japanese subtitles, there is a link down below. There is a rumor that Resident Evil 7 will have cross-platform support for save files between Xbox One and PS4. It's a small start, but it is one in the right direction. Ubisoft has gotten into the holiday spirit by starting a 30-day advent calendar, which they are calling Ubi30. They promise free games, gifts, wallpapers, and all you have to do is sign up in a link down below. Final Fantasy XV has had its trophy list leaked, and if you want to see what they are, you can find them below too. A mod for Battlefield 2 has added in the Falklands War, a conflict that took place during the early 80s between the British and Argentina. Capcom has come out to say that they have plans to support Street Fighter V until 2020. Another mod reskins Street Fighter V's Laura into Sombra, the latest character added to Overwatch. And speaking of Overwatch, there's a rumor that suggests a winter event is coming soon, so start saving up your in-game currency. Start saving up in real life if you want this Reaper statue, because if you want one, it will set you back 150 US dollars. Which brings us to our release announcements, and as usual, we like to start with delays. There's only one this time. Worlds Adrift, an open world game with persistent servers will now be releasing in the first quarter of 2017. Hearthstone will be seeing its first expansion, The Mean Streets of Gadgets Inn, three days from today on Thursday, December 1st. Forza Horizon 3 has its first expansion coming called Blizzard Mountain, and you can find the patch notes in a link down below. That's not to be confused with my own Blizzard Mountain, which is my stack of Blizzard games. Path of Exile is getting an expansion called Breach coming this Friday, December 2nd, and then getting some DLC is Warhammer End Times Fermentide with the Kara, Karak as, Karak as, Gar you know what, we're going to call it the Frank update. Warhammer End Times Vermintide, the Frank update. There you go. The Division updates tomorrow to 1.5 on PS4. This update released last week for Xbox One and PC. Hitman updated, which allows for offline unlocks and will be added to your profile once you re-establish an internet connection. Deus Ex Go now has the ability to create custom puzzles and then share them online with your friends. There is now a demo on Steam for Inside, a game made by the same developer of Limbo. Shopkeep is a game about running your own fantasy item shop and it's getting ported to PS4. Battle Right, a new MOBA, is offering a free weekend starting December 1st and ending on December 4th. Finally for teasers, somehow and some way, a trainer was able to beat the entire Elite Four of Pokemon Sun using only Magikarp. What a struggle. It has been zero days since Sean Murray and Hello Games have tweeted about No Man's Sky. Let's talk about the patch that broke their silence next on News Cartridge. Holy hell, almost 100 days since Sean Murray or Hello Games tweeted about No Man's Sky, the game received a rather large update yesterday. Not really sure who updates on a Sunday, but whatever. A six and a half minute trailer was put out showing off some of the new features, including a survival mode and a creative mode. The biggest feature of this update is the addition of base building, along with farming, and players may now purchase the huge freighters that were absent on launch. Now, all in all, this update is a great thing and a step in the right direction. But it's too little too late. Bases cannot be placed anywhere and are in predetermined locations. Not to mention that once you make the base, you have to make the decision to stay by it and keep building it, or abandon it forever and go through a black hole. Now there is no telling if other people can see your creation, and because there is less than 5% of people playing currently as there were on launch, to quote our good buddy, the chances of you seeing another player's base is practically zero. Some data mining into the patch suggests that land vehicles are coming at some point in the future, but nothing has been confirmed by Hello Games. And quite frankly, it wouldn't. They have been so insultingly quiet since the launch of their game, it's embarrassing. I wouldn't call No Man's Sky a mistake, but I would put that label on not talking to your fan base for three whole months. Next up today, game developer Troy Lavitt has made a response to Anita Sarkeesian series, Tropes vs. Women in Games. The video is nearly 15 minutes long and starts off by comparing Sarkeesian's ideals to that of Stalin's rule of the USSR while in a famine. 
Now, he doesn't call her a dictator as much as he compares cherry-picking data points from her YouTube series and calls it ideological propaganda. Also points out many instances of which Anita is hypocritical and only includes cases of violence against women in games when the same violence can be done to male characters in that same game. Then portrays what will happen if Sarkeesian's ideology becomes more widespread and points to the removal of Grand Theft Auto V from some retail stores. Now, I completely agree with the points that Mr. Levitt makes, including his final point that video games are the most egalitarian form of entertainment ever created. That is, they are the most inclusive of all races, sexes, and creeds. I hope that we would all agree that our hobby tries to include everyone they can because, well, playing games is fun. Now, I know that is a really simple point to make, but I think the dissent that Anita brings to our hobby forgets that and ultimately falls short. And the quick spot today is Project Genome, a game that was removed from Steam because of a DMCA claim. Allegedly, there was an issue with one of the programmers who was fired because of a payment dispute. The programmer and the owner of the studio then met in Russia and came to a civil conclusion without the need to sue each other or involve court proceedings in any way. And as such, Project Genome is now back on Steam. While this dispute went on, those who already own the game should have seen no changes as the servers never went offline. All in all, it's really nice to have adults acting like adults and settling things in a tasteful manner. Finally today, a VR game is getting cross-platform support, and it's Eagle Flight VR. Not only will it have cross-play between the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift, but the PSVR is included too. Now personally, I had hoped that 2016 would be the year that cross-platform play rolled out in its truest sense, but due to everything else that's happened this year, I know that that is not going to happen, though we are one step closer. This brings up a whole new idea to me, which I hadn't considered before, which is cross-platform play between console and PC via VR, and I think it could work. My biggest fear is that the PSVR would be at a disadvantage due to hardware limitations, but I would also hope that Sony has that figured out in some way. So let me say that VR is one more place that I think cross-platform play would be welcome, but let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section down below. Before we do game releases, I need to let everyone know that the dates for my winter break have been finalized. There won't be any episodes between Wednesday, December 1st and Monday, December 26th, with episodes resuming Tuesday, December 27th. Uh, New Year's actually falls on a Saturday night this year, so I would have been off anyway, and there will not be a break in episodes because of that. All right, on to tomorrow's game releases for PC, Watch Dogs 2, Stratus Battle for the Sky, Pinball FX2 VR, and Neon Arena. For PlayStation 4, Final Fantasy 15, A King's Tale Final Fantasy 15, Steins Gate Zero, Star Trek Bridge Crew, The Crew Calling All Units, Aquamoto Racing Utopia, Destroy All Humans 2, How We Soar, and Pinball FX2 VR. For Xbox One, Final Fantasy 15, A King's Tale Final Fantasy 15, The Crew Ultimate Edition, and The Crew Calling All Units. And for PlayStation Vita, Steins Gate Zero. Thank you very much, everybody. This has been News Cartridge. I am Dandruff. I will see you tomorrow. And what's the difference between USA and USB? One has standards. <laughs>